Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of VCTV. Ah! I am your host, Kyle Ellicott. We've got a fun and exciting episode for you today. If you don't know what the sound was in reference, you're going to find out in just a little bit. But with that being said, we're going to be talking about space and deep technologies. We're going to be looking to the stars and much further beyond, but looking at the deep technologies, those integrative deep infrastructure technologies that are going to help us get there, but also are helping fuel our world down here on Earth today. I know this may sound like science fiction, but it's science fact. We are already in this process right now. We need to talk about it. There's huge opportunities and even more than you can ever imagine to start investing and building in each of these industries. And we brought two of the best, the brightest to talk just about this from the space side and from the deep tech side. Get ready. It's going to be a fun episode today here on BCTV. But before we get started, a big thank you for you tuning in. If you're liking what you hear today, make sure you click that subscribe button down there to tune into all episodes every day, all day, BCTV from around the world as we bring the best and the brightest to talk to you about different technologies, industries, and regions around the world with their thoughts and insights from their on-the-ground perspective. And if you yourself would like to be on BCTV, do reach out and we'd love to find the right spot for you. And entrepreneurs, that goes for you too. We're less than 30 days out here in 2020. What better way to end the year and kick off 2021 than joining us on the virtual stage here at VCTV. Have the chance to pitch us as founders and investors focused on your industry, get real-time feedback on your company, product, or service, build foundational relationships with us, and get exposure to the live audience. What better opportunity than that to close out your year? Reach out to the team and or myself. We'd love to find the right spot for you. Last but not least, a huge thank you to the LA Token team and to Maria for making VCTV possible every single day and bringing us all together in this wonderful virtual environment to be able to share our thoughts and insights with you, our audience. That being said, let's introduce our guest, Arena. Welcome back to the show. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. A little intro and a little background. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to be back. I missed you guys. Um, I'm so excited to talk today about uh, space. I actually woke up at 4 a.m. yesterday to talk on VCTV Singapore. It was space and deep tech. I was like uh, setting up the alarm and waking up extra early. So such a pleasure to be back. Um, My name is Irina Litchfield. I'm founder of Blockchain Cubed. Blockchain Cubed is a blockchain integration company. I'm also president of Lumeria. Lumeria is where capital meets innovation. Our goal is to democratize opportunities and democratize investments all over the world. Um, I'm also um, a senior advisor for Space Fund. And so this topic is very relevant to to me and Lumeria will be launching uh, first quarter next year with actually space companies as well. There's a lot of exciting stuff that's happening in space and in deep tech, and it's just such a pleasure to be back. It's awesome to have you as well. And you're right, there is so much happening. And speaking of space fund, we had Megan Crawford, uh, one of the managing partners, a founding partners, pardon me, uh, on here. And her and I did an amazing uh, one-on-one fireside conversation. So if you haven't listened to that audience, I highly recommend it, full of knowledge. Uh, And we also had Ifron on, who's also uh, an advisor to the fund as well recently to talk a little bit about what's happening in deep tech and uh, on the energy space. Uh, again, another mind-blowing conversation. And today with Irina being here, I mean, this is just this is just setting the stage for a great conversation because she's right, there's so much here. But last but not least, we're also joined today by the grandmaster himself of artificial intelligence. Before, before the show, he was flickering in and out. We weren't sure if he was really here or if he was an artificial... Uh, intelligence driven hologram but ladies and gentlemen he is here to join us in the flesh gary fowler welcome back to the show my friend a little intro does that mean i have to say ah (laughs) there you go there you go it's kind of a wow experience if you know what i mean so it's great to be here my name is gary fowler and uh i'm a serial entrepreneur been 16 companies I love artificial intelligence, quantum computing now, cybersecurity, space, deep tech. I mean, you name it, any place where AI can be, have a, a monument, make a monumental difference. So that's really where we are. So I'm the CEO and president of GST, Get Shit Done Venture Studios, and also GST Labs. So where we help companies uh, go global. Um, you know, I've been doing uh, technology companies for 30 years, done an IPO in NASDAQ, uh, 
we've had uh, one exit. I was on the original management team, Click Software, sold for $1.35 billion. And also Eva, which is one of my companies that I started four years ago. Um, I also have health tech companies, I, quite a few companies, actually. I just love technology. Country boy from Pennsylvania, and it's good to be here with the Yoda, with the grand Yoda of everything, Kyle, and my friend Arena. Thank you, thank you. Uh, it is, uh, it is an Yoda. honor. Not well. just the Yoda, the grand Yoda. The grand Yoda. I am a step. I, 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 I don't feel worthy, but thank you very much for that. And that's uh, another. It, that's another movie. <laughs> that's another movie. That's another episode of BCTV coming here just shortly for you afterwards later today, but. Um, I want to come back, Gary, in, in just a moment on quantum and security. However, before we do that, Arena, I want to I want to start off with space. Uh, you work and do a lot, actually, more than I think the audience knows around space fun and the industry as a whole. Um, right now, as we close out 2020, we just had an, an outstanding mission uh, completed by SpaceX, sending some individuals up to the International Space Station. Uh, for an extended journey. And we also just, I, I saw on, on, the, on the Twitters, on Twitter um, yesterday, uh, pictures actually being sent back, video footage of uh, on the ground um, from Curiosity, I believe it is, of um, the landscape of Mars. So we're starting to see this bridge moving into space, not just being something of, again, science fiction, but truly science fact. And now an industry that we all need to be paying attention to. From your view, what's happening in space in the industry as a whole today that some may not be aware of, but should be kept up to date on? Absolutely, it's so much excitement is happening. Actually, yesterday also China landed on the moon uh, to collect um, to collect samples or whatever they are doing there. I don't, you know, we, that's what they say they're doing there. Um, but to, to, to clarify, it was they actually sent a, a, a rover. Yeah. If, if I'm correct, right? right? I read the same. So, so just for the audience, and I'll put this in the notes here in just a moment. No, but no people, I, no people ended, right? Yeah, there, there was a a, a a robot, a rover, we'll call it, uh, that landed on China on the moon, and then at the same time, we got this video footage um, from Mars uh, right. as well, and it's it's fascinating. But sorry, yeah, continue. It's it, no, 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 not at all. It, what's important about that is that we are going back, right? So last time we were on the moon, it was the was the uh, entrepreneurs from Israel who uh, basically been, were able to launch and crash into the moon uh, for a million dollars, which is unbelievable. It just kind of communicates what, what's possible, right? Because they use different service providers for launch and they're, through cargo, they did that. Um, you, they didn't need a billion dollars to crash into the moon. They did it for a million bucks. And that's amazing for entrepreneurship. Um, a lot is happening in the space. Um, in the last six months, space industry is just exploding. So many, so many companies are taking spotlights. And um, most importantly, a lot of development is happening and a lot of launching is happening. Obviously, for the most part, when we think about kind of a commercial application for now, uh, shorter term, it's lower Earth orbit. So we call it LEO. So if you see a reference to LEO um, in the space news, that's basically what it is. It's a lower Earth orbit. Um, and that's kind of the big target that um, a lot of investors are concentrating on right now. However, it is very still important to understand that we are experiencing race, race to the moon and race to the Mars. And it's different type of a race because it's not a political, it's commercial race this time, right? So, and the difference in that is so important. And the fact is that Chinese Chinese landed the rover yesterday communicates that things are going to get expedited even faster. Right. Uh, the reason it's important is because there's we now there's ice on the moon, so we can build hydrogen motors and go to the Mars. So I do think that the things that uh, Elon Musk says, as as wild as they sound, um, they are realistically cl closer to us um, than they were before. Well, and to your point again, I mean science science fiction to science fact, right? Some of this stuff has just been 
so far out there that, you know, we could only imagine it. Uh, we couldn't actually see it uh, happen, right? We, we visited the moon uh, on the ground once and that was it, right? We, we started to, to tease out uh, exploration, but again, it was just a tease. And now we actually have this starting to happen on a more uh, regular basis. And I think one thing to, to note uh, as well is uh, this is not cheap, right? There is a huge cost to these missions. Now let's let's pause there. So real quick, coming back, the thing that uh, Arena you're mentioning and touching on so much is that there is movement happening, but throughout this, there are these little picks and shovels, these little pieces that everyone should be looking at and focusing on to start building because those don't need uh, a lot of capital, right? So one of the uh, examples both you and Megan have referenced previously on VCTV is you know, in, in space gas stations and how there was a company and I forgot their name, which you can, you can uh, provide here in just a moment if, if you remember as well, that they wanted to build these gas stations for, for um, uh, fuel Different deployment. Service in providers. Space. <laughs> yeah, and that they saw, well, hey, this is something we want to do in the future, but right now it's probably not the best uh, use of capital. So actually let's start. And they found the idea of producing fuel capsules, if I'm correct. And then they found this enormous business for just the cap of fuel containers. It's just, it's crazy how much there is, but I want to pause on that for just a second. So Gary, I'm coming down to you. So we, we just went to the stars coming back down. One of the big pieces of this puzzle that's not really talked about, or I should say too, AI, quantum. AI is helping us do a lot of this uh, activity, but quantum is probably gonna be a big piece of this. What are you seeing in both of those areas that people need to be aware of today, whether it's related to the stars or again here on the ground, because quantum like space is science, sci has been science fiction and now is today science fact. Well, I AI, mean, look, Kyle, look at, look at uh, you know, Nikola Tesla when he was talking about uh, communications. He was he did his remote boat in the remote boat in the late 1800s. He talked about uh, the fluorescent lights. I mean, you, I mean, across the board. And so at the time, they I remember seeing cartoons from those years. I uh, was watching a documentary, and they had him as a mad scientist. But look at the a lot of he talked about um, you know. X-rays. I mean, you I, I, literally across the board. Communication, cell phones. I mean, it's come true. So, and it's so funny because the original uh, mobile phones, the the Motorola StarTac, were looked very similar to what you had on um, the USS Enterprise and uh, Star Trek. Right, the StarTac mm -hmm. looked like Star Trek. And so, I mean, it's funny how the things really come to life and. We're in an unprecedented time. I mean, think about it. Yeah. So our friend Christopher Altman, who's a NASA uh, astronaut, told me that there's six billion Earth-like planets now just in the Milky Way galaxy, and now estimated to be 200 trillion. And, and when you say Earth-like, that means close enough to a star that they could have life because of the conditions, the seasons, et cetera. So, I mean, these are unprecedented times. And we look at, I mean, we're on, what, what did he tell me? He said, that, and it was interesting. When you look down at the earth, when the astronauts talk about when they come look at the earth, it's a religious experience because you understand how small we really are in the whole mm -hmm. scope of the universe. So now we talk about travel to Mars. I mean, we've got a lot of, challenges when there's debris, there's uh, objects flying at you. We need to have devices on those ships to can identify and course correct very quickly to make sure we don't, you know, if you're out in space and you're traveling, what is it, a year to go to Mars? Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't want to be having some small rock hit your ship and end up creating a problem. So you, you know, you depressurize it. We don't want those kind of occurrences. So there's a lot of things to take into consideration and it's all about the data, right? All the data points. The other thing is the European Space Agency has a, an intelligent assistant. So, I mean, loneliness on the ship to be able to talk to somebody, to be able to analyze what's happening with you, right? Like an intelligent, um, was it a space odyssey, how? It was Hal. Actually. Yeah. So I was going to ask you, is it Hal or her or um, 
uh, Her was the other movie with uh, Joaquin Phoenix. But uh, in any case, do you see a presence like that, an artificial presence that would be in in these scenarios? Yeah, I mean, that's what they developed, right? So European space agents, that's what's happening now. This is not fiction, but you don't want to have a Skynet either. <laughs> that that is true. Not, hello, uh, see you later. <laughs> Hey, the door's closed. I hope you have fun. <laughs> right. <laughs> Roll the dice. See yeah. how you're going to go. Good luck. Hasta la vista, <laughs> baby. <laughs> now, so what we got to do is we got to make sure, but these are the kind of challenges. I mean, I mean, to look at it, by the year 2100, it's estimated, I mean, the population of the planet has quadrupled in the last 100 years. And if it stayed on track, um, it's going to reduce will be estimated now 13 billion, but we don't have enough potable water. We don't have enough land. We're destroying our uh, climate, right? With uh, the global warming. I mean, look at it. I mean, a lot of things are changing very, very quickly. So we've got to look beyond the earth. And, you know, it's interesting to see how fast, think about 200 years ago, a hundred years ago, if we would have been talking about going to Mars then, I mean, it was just a pipe dream to go to the moon. They had like, I remember seeing was a French uh, uh, movie uh, mogul had this space shot like of a bullet on um, the moon. I don't know if you saw it. Johnny Depp played the character in a, in a, um, a movie. Uh, anyhow, it's just interesting how things have really uh, dramatically shifted. So the universe is up. I remember, uh, again, your friend Christopher Altman talking about being able to the teleportation of quantum particles is part of his research as a, a PhD quantum physicist. I mean, mm -hmm. traveling through wormholes. I mean, it's just it's just opening up. Ah, quantum. So taking a, a system uh, that could process uh, at a hundred million times faster than a conventional computer. Think about it. Something would take ten thousand years, and a conventional computer could take two hundred seconds on a quantum computer. <laughs> That's a lot of stuff happening. Think about if you're doing drug modeling, think if you're trying to figure out trajectories, you know, it's just incredible. So how many advances are we gonna have? I mean, it's, it's virtually unlimited. So quantum computers like, uh, you know, it's like what the Greeks talked about having an Oracle, but for real. Right. I mean, what does this do, you know, Arena, to, to your to your thinking as well? I mean, how does this change the game for us as we look towards the stars? I mean, furthering on Gary's point, uh, whether it be, you know, actually the propulsion to get us there, uh, whether it's on the station itself, so the currently the International Space Station, or if it's getting us further beyond, because the computing processing power that Gary's talking about, as he's referenced in, in Quantum, I mean, that does, that changes the game very dramatically. And again, science fiction to science fact uh, here, but would love to hear your thoughts as to how does quantum play a role as well from what you're seeing uh, as well on the space side. Absolutely. I think that all of the above, right? Because it allows us to really calculate complex modeling and uh, complex modeling is something that just, just like Gary said, uh, you know, wrapping, wrapping, our heads around the exponential growth that quantum computing allows us uh, to do is unbelievable. I think that we really are um, going to, and you know, people say quantum leap and often it, but that's, I think that's exactly what it is, the exponential growth that will become available for us for on so many different verticals is, is huge. And for space exploration, that's very important. I do personally believe that um, we, we are due to advancement in physics. Um, the way we travel right now and the way we learn, we know how to the physics work is in my opinion is outdated. And there, there are several projects that, um, that are actually working on breaking through those boundaries. Right. Uh, for example, one of them is quantum machines. Um, so it, and it really is just looking at physics in a different way, but we need the ability to model better. And so I think as the computing becomes faster, we can then model a lot of uh, interesting 
things. Um, and I, I want to go back to, to what Gary said about the uh, kind of emotional, about loneliness, right? Mm -hmm, and going mm -hmm. into space. And often people say that, um, well, you just sent several people, right? Mm -hmm. And so then you eliminate the loneliness. But however, it's still, it's still not enough. You really need, in order for us to push the frontiers of space, and that means going to the great unknown, and going to that where, you know, a hundred years ago, going to Mars was something that was just a pipe dream, just a fantasy. We still, we still have so much boundary to push in that fantasy realm, right? Like just because we're getting to the Mars, we can go so much further. But for us to be able to go further, we really need to be able to create a healthy ecosystem where people can survive all the unknown factors, right? That includes isolation and complete dis unplug from your world as you know it. Right, and that's a that's a, a fascinating point. So you're bringing up this world ecosystem, right? So right now we talk about getting from point A to point B, right? So from on the ground to the state to the International Space Station, as an example, right? Or from the the station to a planet, being the 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 moon and or. Um, uh, Mars, et cetera. So we're just really talking about these point A to point Bs, but what you're talking about and, and bringing up is a great point of this entire ecosystem of everything that we need, not just for our survival, because as we've learned from, from you before, space is always trying to kill you. So uh, we're, we're not only just our general survival, but also to, to have like what feels like a natural environment when we're in space, right? So again, the gas stations, the, the general living stations and all these other things as well. But um, Arena, to switch gears real quick, blockchain. Our favorite subject here on BCTV, go blockchain. Ah! Um, there we go, okay, we're three for three. Uh, maybe Maria will jump in and throw the, throw the fourth one out for us uh, if we're lucky. But um, with that, how does blockchain play a role in space? I mean, we've got a few companies that are doing mining, right, that have sent uh, small uh, sats, uh, satellites up into space to do uh, mining of, of currencies. But realistically, I want to go beyond that and see yeah. how blockchain plays a bigger role in the future of space technologies um, for those that may be looking at this. Yeah, absolutely. Blockchain is very important. Um, I'll, I'll start kind of with that far out and away. Um, you know, when we think about the space exploration and we think about sending missions, one way missions um, to, you know, to send the ecosystem, that that immutable information is going to be very important, right? Uh, because the ability to not change and make sure that we engrave information um, is important for those type of emissions, um, at least at least it would be important for us as we send them out, right? Um, so I think a blockchain as just an immutable ledger is very important on its own. Um, now, if we bring it forward here back into a, more of a reality, right? Because space exploration is still kind of a further away, right? It's still that dream that we, you know, one day we will be able to go and be in space and have you know, mission settlement missions going somewhere and seeing what, you know, what happens. Um, basically, to me, the biggest application is supply chain, right? Mm -hmm. And it's important because, as you said, everything is extremely expensive in space. And so your arrows, your mistakes in the supply chain are unbelievable. I mean, a rocket, what is a half a billion dollars? So it just blows up, right? Poof, and it's gone. And it can happen because of a simply faulty parts. And we actually saw that happen last year. So supply chain is a great application for that, right? Uh, uh, for, for, for just creating kind of a systems back here. Of course, also in space payment system. Um, I really would like somebody to build a couple of those. So entrepreneurs, <laughs> I'll even help you. Just reach out to me and I'll guide you through and what, what do you need to do? You know, I do have blockchain company so I can assist you. You don't, you don't, you know, you don't need to be the expert in that. But I'd love to see some, some of the companies that basically allow the service providers 
in space, so even if it's in low orbit, to be able to do transactions, right? So if you need a 3D part, you, you know, you, you exchange some kind of tokens and, and it all happens in space, and then you can push all the data set for settlement, you know, back to Earth and you can do reconciliation back here. But, um, you know, that's, that's very, very important. And of course, um, to me, again, the supply chain for in space, right? Because the the margin for arrow is, are even thinner there, right? Like it is just, it, it does try to kill you nonstop. You know, it tries to smoosh all your things. And as Gary said, a little rocket comes in and poof, you know, you have a problem. <laughs> and that problem yeah. accelerates very, very fast. Um, you know, so so I see, I see those two applications um, that are kind of a cover and there's everything in between. Right, but blockchain and space industry are important. And I also think that that's again my personal opinion is that um, tokenization of assets is what we're going to see growing in 2021. And um, kind of a securities token, and it is still a blockchain application. I think we will see a lot of interesting securities token offerings for space companies. And by the way, Space Fund is the first, um, one of the first venture capital that are dedicated to space, right? And also their first ever uh, tokenized funds fund. So they're hybrid, you can you can either or do both. And so we are, we, we really do believe that we are going to see that transition in securities and capital markets going on to the blockchain. And uh, space, I think, is going to be one of the bigger ones because it is most reliable asset, not asset class yet, uh, but we're working on being asset class. And so because of that, tokenizing, it makes it available globally. And that's what you need for, for better liquidity, because as you said, everything is extremely expensive, right? You can have an A round company raising a hundred million dollars. But times are changing, and and I uh, great points, uh, Arena. And Gary, to you, cybersecurity. You mentioned this in the beginning. We've talked a little bit about this recently, but uh, when we look towards the stars, that's one area. But just in general, security. Security seems to always be the last thing people talk about when they're looking at building or investing in something. For you, um, the question here is, you know, where does cybersecurity play a role in space? One. And two, what's generally happening in the cybersecurity space that people may not be aware of that they need to be, as you also focus on AI and quantum, which are going yeah, to impact sure. the future of it. Well, I mean, this, so the, uh, I mean, the, the thing is, we don't focus on cybersecurity as much as we should. We have all this data around us, and as I've, I've said uh, many times, and especially really appropriate here. The amount of data on the planet Earth is forty zettabytes today. It's twenty nine trips if you stock put DVDs one on top of another back and forth to the moon. And it's grown at 61.7% per year. So massive amount of data around us. And with that data, you know, I feel like Spider-Man with data comes great responsibilities, you know? <laughs> but we got, we got a lot of challenges. I mean, there's, there's a lot of data out there and we haven't really looked at it the way we should in terms of cybersecurity. I mean, you know, the I remember having a criminology class when I was in university. We talked about, you know, whenever something comes out as a fix, the uh, the bad guys come in and figure out how to break it. But now with quantum computers, we're at a whole different level because, as we said, there could be two quantum computers facing off against each other, and the calculations are so fast. <laughs> that it's, you know, it's not like, well, I'm just going to put this antivirus system in and it's going to take care of it. No, you got to have a machine that can anticipate where the next break is going to take place because that, I mean, now with the internet of things uh, with, I mean, think about it. If they took control of the satellites, right? You had a quantum computer that could go up and grab all the satellites and, you know, uh, switch them off. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> this is like, you know, this is a simple stuff. So we've got a lot of challenges moving forward at the same time, you know, and, and Kyle, when we talk about space, we got to talk about, it. it's not just a travel, it's about things like a satellites, right? And right. think about the onboard satellite 
uh, systems that we have today currently in uh, that are looking at things like floods and volcanic eruptions, um, where to capture images. I don't know if you know, but I mean, from a satellite, you can literally see a dime from space. I, I mean, people don't realize that you can actually read the date on a dime from space. They're that good. So the, you know, we've got to go down through and what about space debris? Think about mm -hmm. all the debris that's out there floating, how we track it and who's tracking it. We didn't think about it before. We put all this garbage out there, literally garbage, and what's happening with it. So we've got to go down through and understand. And, and I mean, they're doing research today. AI is doing research and things like dark matter in space. Those kind of things are critically important for us. What about asteroids? I just read what two days ago, there's an unidentified, ast uh, unidentified object I'm not saying a spaceship coming towards Earth. Well, I mean, there's a reason the dinosaurs aren't around. Hello. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, we should be thinking about how to thwart those kind of things rather than, um, you know, uh, it's creating wars with each other. It should be some kind of joint effort. We need to fix the planet and move forward, not to be and protect it, not to try to kill each other. And uh, you know who's going to win this battle? It's we got to go out there and work together. So we've got, you know, and now going to Mars. If we look at you know where we are in terms of the next, you know, the Mars rover edition. So the 2020 rover is going out. We've got to understand what we're going to be getting into in Mars exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of um, a lot of uh, not skepticism, but curiosity, shall we say? about some of the things that they found already. Well, let's, let's explore those. You know, was, was Mars an Earth-like planet? Really, right? Because they said they found some evidence of water on Mars. It's, it's just, it's fascinating. And anyhow, so AI is gonna put, put a huge part on it. The last thing again was cybersecurity. What we don't wanna do is have some hostile force taking control of a ship that's out with people on it going to Mars. Can you imagine how that would be? And hold them mm -hmm. hostage? right? Mm -hmm. So the issues need to be resolved. We better do it before it's a problem. Absolutely. And, and that being said, Arena and, and Gary, I'll come to both of you on this, but Arena, let's start with you. Opportunities. So we've talked a lot uh, about all these areas and, and you talked a little bit about payments in space and, and a few other areas that, uh, that could be opportunities, but where should both investors and founders be focused on over the next three years? Okay, we're gonna we're gonna kind of bridge between what we've talked about previously. So over the next three years, what should uh, both sides of the table be looking at, whether to be deploying capital into or be building uh, as well uh, as these industries really start to take off? Because to both of your points, space is still in its early infancy in terms of coming to market, right? Where we're all starting to get into it. Quantum is it's a very, very, very early days, but blockchain and AI are starting to have their moment. So with that all being said, all these areas and some of the other stuff we haven't talked about, where are some of those areas of opportunity arena you see uh, that people should be paying attention to over the next three years? Yes, next three years, I think exactly this, basically security, all the things that uh, Gary mentioned are real and they're real problems. And before we go in explore space, we must make sure we clean up the mess that we have made so far. There's a lot of um, space garbage and actually it's the sensors that we have right now, for example, are one mile away. One mile. So like once it gets closer to you, you don't know what the hell is going on, right? It's, it's unbelievable that th what is happening and now that's going to sound very scary for some people, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it. There is a space war going on right now, and that space war going on uh, for different governments and the cyber attacks. People think cyber attacks are going to happen from hacking, hacking whatever, you know, whatever systems, you know, the, whatever, the Internet, something. It really is the, the biggest attacks and biggest threats that we have right now are actually coming from taking down our satellites. And as Gary said, uh, taking them over. And uh, it is one of the biggest issues that Space Force is concentrating on. And they have a really big budget um, dedicated to, um, to supporting startups that can provide cybersecurity and just a security as well as physical security 
as well as um, kind of figuring out how do we deal with the space mess that we have. And most importantly, moving forward, how do we design better systems to where when something goes offline, we can clean it up much better um, than what is happening right now. Um, the reason I'm saying this is because it means that there is a big, big opportunity and that's where that opportunity for next three years. So for the entrepreneurs and for the investors, I would keep my eye open on that because these are the biggest challenges that we're dealing with and when we have challenges it means that we have open opportunities for for growth right so i think that um and again importantly there's a there's funding for it available and funding available for it not just from space force which they clearly um so i was at a, a north american space symposium in september and the uh, uh, general of Space Force uh, did the address. And his biggest message was that they really are moving forward into new era um, where now basically entrepreneurs and solutions, they're, they're basically seeking out uh, solutions from free enterprise to come in and, and create solutions for them because they do not have we just there's not enough talent internally and it can't be any more recruiting into the space force right recruiting people to go to air force for example so they're really wanting to bridge the to free enterprise and empower entrepreneurs and um and give them kind of ability because because it's a big problem it's one of the basically that's what i carried out from there is that we are really under big threat uh, right now and that's where i would deploy funding right now besides you know besides all the things once once you already invested in that i would go and start diversifying portfolio in the gas station and maybe get a launch platform and you know a kind of asteroid mining and keep pushing forward but for now we need to take care of leo we have to take care of leo and um we are daily under a threat of being able to just lose completely our internet right like what happens if it all goes down and it's right. possible and it's it's real and it's now so cybersecurity is number one opportunity right now all right thank you arena and gary to you same question over the next three years what should people be paying attention to on both sides of the table well, I mean, the thing is artificial intelligence, right? It's because we're going to need like this crew interactive module. I just sent an article over, by the way, Kyle, that I wrote yep, on. I got it. Uh, but those are the kind of things, innovative ways we can create these, you know, human-like uh, companions that can help us to uh, emotionally feel better, but also, you know, medically, I mean, we're going to have to have systems that can check us out and, and relay information back to earth. So, the, I mean, the things like, you know, we're talking about terraforming on Mars. I mean, we're doing it. The companies, I forget the name, Carbon, I forget, Carbon E maybe, but they're actually terraforming on the Earth. They're dropping like 100,000 trees per day using drones. So these kind of technologies, if we're going to live on these other planets, but think about the innovations that came through just because of uh, going up to space. So Velcro. I don't know, most people don't know, Velcro was a Russian um, uh, invention that, that was commercialized in the West, but came from uh, space shoots, right? So the actual Velcro, look at all the, I mean, there's thousands of technologies that came out of space. So what we gotta do is as we're going through, you know, how, do, how can we eat longer? How do we carry that food to space? How do we have uh, artificial intelligence to be able to help us with medical procedures. What happens if there's an accident in space? Yes, science uh, that astronauts are trained for two years and they have to learn emergency medical procedures. But I was reading an article in the uh, India Times that said that you know we're not we're not we're they're still not preferred. What about the unknown? So the good news is the technology is there. Um, today is being developed on our artificial intelligence side to look at all that data, pull it in to help the, us make better decisions. We've got challenges, as uh, Irina said, with cybersecurity. So anything around cybersecurity. Again, these are transportable models that can be used in different way. If we're cybersecure in space, we're cybersecure on, on the grid, right? So mm -hmm. it's not one place. And the other thing is quite frankly, we're gonna need how to work together. These are problems beyond 
any one country that we got to figure out we're going to come together as a society or we'll perish. We need to start working together to solve problems because when that asteroid does come, we better damn well be ready to be able to figure out how to be able to get it off course so it doesn't hit us. Because the last thing we want is that to happen. Figure, anticipate now and use the technology to be able to help us, you know, make this world a little bit better place. Well, and, you know, we'll have to call up uh, Bruce Willis and Ben Affleck and the whole uh, Armageddon crew um, to, to help us out. All jokes aside. Superman. <laughs> and, or and or Superman. All jokes aside, we like to have fun here on VCTV. But uh, to, to Gary and Arita's points, there's a lot of opportunities, but there's also a lot of uh, potential issues that are impeding on us as we continue to advance ourselves year by year here. And again, more opportunities around space space exploration, but more importantly, space business, uh, space economy, uh, where space is. So the economy and business that we'll be doing outside of things here on earth. So again, going beyond or going to the stars and beyond as well, but then also talking about blockchain and how that applies, not just to those areas, but also here on the ground. And again, uh, looking at cybersecurity and protecting that supply chain or that value chain all the way through from the data to what we are doing in real time in those areas, to the AI that will be powering and keeping us not lonely, uh, as well to uh, the quantum computing power that really will probably change our entire world as we can even imagine it uh, today. Um, I wanna thank both of you so much for all of this. I mean, there's so much we could go on both these topics for hours, but uh, as we come to close here, closing thoughts, and then also where can everyone find you? So Arena, let's start with you. Closing thoughts to today's conversation around space, deep tech, but really, you know, blockchain, cybersecurity, AI, quantum, ML, uh, closing thoughts and, and where can everyone find you? I, my closing thoughts would be uh, we're stepping into era of integration and we must integrate innovations as well as have ability to work together, as Gary said. I think that that's, that's my biggest concentration uh, to carry out of it because these innovations that we discussed, they're happening and they're going to change the way we look at the world and the way we think about the world. So that also means there are huge opportunities as well. So I really want to encourage entrepreneurs to look at all of this innovations and see how they can be part of the ecosystem and how they can integrate these innovations into their respective uh, industry. And as well as uh, investors, I really would like to encourage them to open up your thesis to diversifying your portfolio and looking at investing in these opportunities as well. Because in the, if we look at the 10 year investment, 10 years from now, we're going to live in a completely different world and it's going to be very, very different. So remember that you're in what, where you deploy your funding now is going to be direct result of the reality that we live in between five to 10 years from now. So think wisely and, and, and deploy vote with your dollars and encourage, empower those entrepreneurs that are leading the way and that are integrating and whose values are in a way, built in a way to where they want to democratize opportunities and investments and connect our segregated worlds. Um, as Gary said, we either start working together or we, you know, we're living out our last days or years, whatever it is. And um, find me on Twitter or find me on LinkedIn. Just make sure that you uh, make the reference of, you know, where where you met me and what you uh, what you would like for me. And I'm always available and I'm always happy to connect. Wonderful. Thank you, Irina. Gary, to you, same thing. Closing thoughts and then where can everyone find you online? Yeah, I mean, so I remember as a kid, Kyle, I, I got a telescope. I was probably 12 years old. And I was real, ha and 11 years old, I'm sorry. I was really happy. I got it from Edmund Scientific and I was able to see the moon. And I mean, I was just fascinated by it. I mean, think about it based on what uh, Christopher Altman said. If there are 200 trillion uh, you know, uh, galaxies out there and we got 6 billion Earth-like planets in ours, that's 1,200 trillion Earth-like planets. So are we alone? And I mean, those are the kind of questions we've been asking for a long time, but we're finally starting to, you know, we're at the very, very beginning steps of probing to figure out what's really out there. And at some point we're gonna need to 
look at other planets to be able to survive. So it's a great time. Uh, artificial intelligence across the board is a very, very interesting place to invest. So I encourage companies, we are data, data driven and making better decisions with that data is critically important today. You can reach me, Gary Fowler. I'm the CEO and president of Get Shit Done GSD Venture Studios, a premier global venture studio helping companies uh, go global, located in Silicon Valley. You can reach me on Twitter, Gary Fowler. You can reach me on LinkedIn or send me an email, gary at gsdvs.com. I'd be happy to talk to you and uh, tune into my shows. I have, uh, yesterday I had Bill Reichert uh, from Silicon Valley on Guy Kawasaki's partner talking about going global. Uh, it's uh, free access for you. Check it out. Be happy to uh, talk to anybody. Thanks, Kyle. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you again, both. Uh, and definitely highly recommend Gary's show and also check out some of the efforts Irina is putting together and has recently put together. She may be dripping out some new content uh, here shortly, but I'll, I'll save that for the next episode. Uh, with that, uh, again, thank you so much, audience, for tuning in. If you like what you heard, click subscribe, give us a thumbs up, do reach out. If you'd like to be on a show like today's, thank you, Arena, to join Arena, Gary, and some of our other guests to talk about different industries, regions, and technologies that are being used around the world. We'd love to have you here on BCTV. Entrepreneurs, less than 30 days, what better way to end the year and start the next than joining us here at the virtual stage on BCTV to pitch us as investors and founders focused on your industry, to get real-time feedback on your company products or service, build foundational relationships with each of us, and to get exposure to our entire live audience. Again, what better way to end and start the next year? Uh, do reach out to the team and or myself. We'd love to find the right spot for you. Last but not least, a big thank you to the LA Token team and to Maria for making VCTV possible every single day, all day, in all regions around the world and all devices, bringing us all together to share our thoughts and insights with these different technologies, industries, and regions around the world with you. I'm your host, Kyle Ellicott. You can find me everywhere at Kyle Ellicott online 24-7. 365. Thank you, Gary. And again, make sure you add context when you reach out to myself, the team, and or all of our guests as well. And we'd love to continue the conversation. We'll be back here just a little bit more VCTV shortly. Thank you.